it can help them have a better understanding um, to think in new and critical ways or to be inspired through it. And I'll give you an example. As part of our reopening plans, you know, we have summer camps here. We have fine and performing art camps here. We have theater camps here. We have history camps all in this building. And normally they're all having a great time together, but because of COVID, we need to keep them separate. So we actually have a camp of our fine and performing arts that is in our temporary gallery space right now. And every morning we walk them down there. The parents drop them off at the door now and we take take them in. And so when I, I love to walk people to the temporary exhibit gallery, because I know those kids are not there for history. They are there for the art camp, which is phenomenal. And they, they love, um, but I get to give them a two minute history lesson along the way. And I take it as a challenge to have them not be bored by me I'm along the way. And I've been able to connect with every kid that I've walked down there in one way or another, even if it's just a, huh, and you can tell they hadn't thought of something before. So I think if we can do it to little campers, we can, we can show that history is relevant to anybody. That's Mary McMurray, who is the director of the Johnson County Museum. Welcome to KC Cares, Kansas City's nonprofit digital resource, bringing your stories to the community. We are proudly sponsored by the Ewing Marion Kaufman Foundation. I'm Ruth Bombigas. Mary, thanks for taking time to talk with us and what a great, introduction about why history is relevant <laughs> and important. Johnson County Museum, you started in April. Hard to believe. Boy, did you start at a crazy time. I, I really, I really did. Uh, to become a museum director when the museum is closed to the public is a incredibly unique uh, experience. And makes for a really fascinating learning curve, but, I, uh, but it's been very lovely. We went from closed to open. We went from learning team members' names to feeling completely bonded. Uh, we've, it's, been, it's been a fascinating ride, and I'm very grateful to be here at the Johnson County Museum. You'll have to write a book. <laughs> okay, when I'm done cleaning the museum, I'll get right on that. That's right, and, and, <laughs> and we should say Mary comes to the position with a very extensive background in history. You have a PhD, but we decided that meant uh, professional hand disinfecting. Yes, I have a PhD in that <laughs> and history. <laughs> well, let's, let's take our uh, listeners, viewers, and give them a snapshot of the museum, and then we'll dive into what life under COVID is like for you all. Great. The, uh, the Johnson County Museum, it's here at the uh, old King Louis building at 8788 Metcalf Avenue. We, this is now the Johnson County Arts and Heritage Center. We have theaters, art classes, dance classes, fine and performing arts, and your nationally award-winning county museum, the Johnson County Museum here. And uh, here at the museum, the museum itself, for those of you who know the King Louis, is in the old ice skating rink. And in the museum, our signature exhibit is Becoming Johnson County, which takes people through our long history um, uh, from agrarian and uh, uh, all the way through to suburbanization to now when we have so many corporate headquarters and we're a place to live and work and play. And we also um, say all of that within the frame of four real key characteristics about uh, policy and regionalism and our people that are here. Uh, and um, we also are constantly trying to, in the exhibit, help people think about having a sense of ownership and place of where we are here in Johnson County and also feeling a connection to our county so that they can help continue to create the history that's yet to be written. Now, did you grow up in Johnson County yourself? No, I grew up in Buchanan County in St. Joseph, Missouri. So I have crossed state lines, but I now live in Johnson County and I'm happy to be here. Let's dig in a little bit more. When somebody comes to the museum, what can they see? What can they experience? Right. Well, you'll get, in many ways, you can get the national history of suburbia here at the Johnson County Museum. Uh, 
you also though, when you go through it and you look at the individual stories that we tell, you get a really in-depth knowledge of the people who helped shape this place where we live, who helped um, at key moments defining who we were and, trans and helped push our county forward. And hopefully you leave with that inspiration that you are part of that effort and can move forward. You'll also see incredible things like um, a, a safe from our early times in Johnson County that um, when people went from subsistence living to being able to have disposable income and we needed banks you needed banks that wouldn't burn you need a safe to keep your money that wouldn't burn and we're kind of hard for people to steal and so you get to see an example of those early times uh, great collections from the Zarda dairy farm uh, cousins of Zarda barbecue and then you also will get to learn about how every suburb in Johnson County kind of developed and you will see the uh, all-electric house that's one of our very big draws, uh, a great piece of nostalgia uh, that continues to have the smell of what the house would have smelled like then. So for me, that smells just like my grandparents' house, and I don't know how it's still around, but it is. We don't pipe it in. It's just the actual smell of the place. Uh, and, and that is our largest artifact in the museum. But you'll also see other wonderful artist artifacts that are touchstones, again, to a national story and also to our very local story. How do you curate all these things? Where do they come from? How do you put it together? Oh, that's a great question. Well, we have an incredible curatorial team that's um, led by Ann Jones, and it's part. Uh, she's part of a long tradition of, of people that started with volunteers running and collecting the Johnson County Museum and is now part of our large professional museum staff. And we, um, there's a lot of research that goes into it. Our curator of interpretation, Andrew Gustafson, uh, will write a 100 page paper prior to doing a museum exhibit. And then we will use that learning paper to um, decide what sorts of artifacts we need or need to go out and find. And so that's, that's a lot of, there's research and there's collection that goes along with it. And then there's strategic priorities that we create, you know, um, as part of our efforts to have the highest level of professionalism, we have to look at things that we are missing in the museum. And there are things missing here in this museum. And so we are actively doing, um, for example, Ann Jones is running a uh, Latino collection, collecting initiative where she's working with communities in Olathe and surrounding areas to build trust and build relationships so that they feel comfortable sharing their stories and their artifacts so it becomes part of our history. Uh, right now we're also collecting, have a collecting initiative for collecting COVID. Uh, which is about the COVID-19 time period, and you can submit your own experience and, and start the connection process about what type of artifacts become part of history. And sometimes that's just about education, right? Who would think that a picture of your sidewalk chalk or your teddy bear picnic or your protest signs are a piece of history, but we need those items in order to tell the larger story. And so we constantly are educating the public on that as well. You all are based at the Arts and Heritage Center yes. out in Johnson County. Who oversees the museum in terms of, of either governance and budget? Oh, great. So we um, have several funding sources, and that includes we are very lucky to be supported by the taxpayers of Johnson County. Um, and we get that money through the Johnson County Parks and Recreation District, which is we are part of the Johnson County Museum as part of that national gold medal winning Johnson County Parks and Recreation District. Uh, and we are very proud to be part of that. Uh, we also have support from our nonprofit partners, the Johnson County Museum Foundation, which is a volunteer-led board that are very active um, in helping us with programming and um, uh, volunteer initiatives and also in fundraising. And then we also have um, appointed by the Board of County Commissioners a Museum Advisory Council that also helps us with our oversight, with our strategic vision, and with uh, planning for the future. So you're quasi nonprofit, sort of, kind of, sort of. <laughs> well, we have very strong nonprofit partners, but I, I am very grateful to be part of Johnson County government, for sure, <laughs> and through the Johnson County Parks and Recreation District. So volunteers really play a very pivotal role in all you do, not just stuffing envelopes. 
Oh, they do not just stuff envelopes. Although we will take help on stuffing envelopes. We are, our uh, volunteer core is very dedicated. They're very knowledgeable. They're very passionate about our history. And so we have volunteers who um, run tours. We have volunteers who help in Kidscape. We have volunteers who fundraise. Um, we have volunteers who help, yes, with the check-in desk and uh, with collecting initiatives. And they are um, so passionate. It's just lovely to see people who truly care about history and understand its importance in building community and and that they help in every way and I haven't had to work with the volunteers much yet because when we when I started we were closed and um, we're just now getting to the phase where volunteers will be able to come back uh, but we also want to, we are they don't know this yet, but we're looking for ways to leverage their great passion and storytelling ability um, in other ways to connect with people who might not be ready to come back to the physical place yet or want to come back for different types of experiences in the museum. Because if you've gone on a tour, you know, there's no, no two tours that are the same here. And how can we capture all those wonderful stories and share them with people that want to hear them? Now there are four main exhibits in the museum. We have the one main signature exhibit okay. um, with four themes that guide four you themes. through it. Yeah, and then we have a temporary exhibit space, which typically is um, filled with temporary exhibits, but right now is filled with campers because we are very, being very good at isolating our camp. So we have an art camp down there right now. Um, and then we have a current temporary exhibit that has found its way into the commons area. So that means that you can come and see it uh, before you even enter into the museum doors, our, our newest temporary exhibit that will be up until the end of the year. Tell us a little bit about that exhibit, and then you've got some exciting things planned after that as well. Right, yeah. So our exhibit that's up in the Commons right now is called uh, Rising to the Challenge, Suburban Strength in Difficult Times. And uh, for those of you who aren't in the museum world, uh, you should know that curators like to plan out exhibits three years in advance. I can tell you, I, well, I can't tell you, but I know what exhibits are coming three years in advance right now. Uh, but when we were closed down, the curatorial team here, in addition to trying to figure out what reopening looks like and attending webinars around the world about how places in China reopened and things like that, we, we kept thinking, what can we do for the community? We are public servants here and we do want to provide something to the community. What can we do in these challenging times? Everybody kept saying, oh, we've never had experienced something like this. And we thought, well, we have. And before, and even beyond just pandemics, we have experienced incredible challenges here in Johnson County related to nature, related to war, related to the economy, and nothing has stopped Johnson Countyans yet. Why not? And so we wanted to talk about why not and share that with people to in the hopes that it would inspire them, that it would embolden them, that it would steal their nerves because we have a ways left to go and we wanted to help people with a little history lesson. So we looked at a lot of crises, which was a little bit of a sad research project, but we looked at a lot of crises that we faced in Johnson County and we looked for the themes that we saw connecting the ability to rise out of that throughout time. And what we found were that there were things like personal sacrifice and there's an ability to innovate and adapt and there's resilience and preparation and there's everybody coming together um, when it's over to commemorate and reflect. And so rising to the challenge highlights those things um, and um, again tries to give people opportunities to reflect and to be emboldened. We have some items from our museum collection up there. We have great narrative. And uh, we ourselves like to say that we rose to the challenge with this exhibit. In addition to the fast timeline, we also looked to our theater and the park director who has graphic design background and said, could you please help us design something? We don't, you know, everybody's doing budget cuts and we, we, we shouldn't spend a ton of money on this, but we want to do this project. And he um, came with his great vision when you when you look at this exhibit, you'll see the faces of Kansans throughout time looking back at you. And it's, it's just so inspiring. Um, and then you'll see a little bit of today as part of the exhibit. We have, um, in, a, in a section talking about innovation and adaptation, we have um, the prototype of the clear face shields that they made at the Kansas, or I'm sorry, the Johnson County Library Central Branch's uh, Black and Beach Makerspace. And you might've heard that in the news that the, the team that was working 
there, worked around the clock, they split shifts so they could run the printer 24 hours a day and created plastic face shields for hospitals in Johnson County. And we got that prototype as part of our collecting initiative and it's right there next to stories from the Great Depression and stories from World War II. And it's telling you, you know, history is happening right now. And then we also have an empty case at the end that's, that's kind of your history here. And we remind people again that we're making history every day and we want to still collect um, stories to help tell future generations how Johnson County has rose to this challenge. And then rolling beyond that, you're even planning. <laughs> we definitely are. So once we, once we launched that exhibit, we realized it, it was really connecting with people and not just those of us who were here. When we opened to the public, we saw it was connecting with humans that were coming through with the press. And we thought, boy, there's more we can do for people. Um, so in between sanitizing the museum and Kidscape, we made an exhibit response wall where the public gets to share their vision of what they want um, Kansas, or Johnson County to look like and Kansas um, following um, COVID, who their heroes have been, what was most important to them, and they put post-its on the wall. It's just nice to stop and read those. And then our partners, um, again, we're in the Arts and Heritage Center, so arts is a huge part of it. Our fine arts partners said, well, we want to do something too, and we kept thinking about we're so apart right now. We don't get to all be together. We don't necessarily all get to collectively process this and heal. And even if we were together, would we be able to do that? We might need some help. And so we looked to the artists. We decided we were gonna put out a call to artists to participate in an art exhibit called Resilience, Reflection, and Rebuilding. Artists Respond to COVID-19. And we thought, you know, uh, they could help connect um, help us process, heal, reflect the things we needed to do through experiencing this art. And the call for entry actually closed last night at, or this morning at midnight, whatever. I don't know what I'm supposed to say. At, at 11.59 p.m. last night. And uh, we were just floored that we had 93 submissions that came in for that. So starting next month in August, you will be able to come here to the Arts and Heritage Center, uh, wear your mask, sanitize, socially distance, sanitize your hands, uh, socially distance distance and experience both the history exhibit and the art exhibit. And you will also get to vote because we, again, we're collecting and we're making history here. And our nonprofit partners, the Johnson County Museum Foundation, have created a prize for what the public is responding to the most. They're going to vote on what piece they want to become a representation, representational piece, a part of our permanent collection. And it's not necessarily about um, having the finest art technique. It's about what, what responds, what, what connects with our hearts, what connects with our minds, what helps us process this. And um, the, found, the Johnson County Museum Foundation has created a prize because the artists deserve to be compensated for their work. So when we ask them to have it be a part of the collection, they will get a cash prize for, for their winning. And we will make sure to share with the whole community what piece will become a permanent part of the Johnson County Museum's collection. Where will folks get to vote? How will they vote? On their phones. All right, so will you have to come through and then you vote as you see it? Yeah, so there'll be a QR code and then you'll be able to vote off of that. How have you gone about making it safe for people to come out and actually see all the wonderful things that you have? Right. Uh, earlier, Ruth, you asked me something about um, history being relevant. How do you tell people when, when they are bored with history or just don't think that it would connect with them? And there's a hundred thousand different history stories I can tell to connect you with what you're passionate about and the history of it. But the other thing that's really important about history is the skills that it gives you, right? We're really great researchers. We can read and synthesize a ton of information. We can communicate things back. And we pulled on every one of those skills that the team here had to read every document we could find from the CDC, the World Health Organization, the, uh, our health department here in Johnson County, the state of Kansas. We collaborated with our partners in the building and throughout JCPRD to try and, and the county to try and figure out what's the best plan. We went, attended webinars with people um, leading museums and entertainment parks in China who had already reopened so we could try and use it as a crystal ball to look in the future of what was working. Uh, I personally worked with Casey Culture 
care is a group of 27 cultural sites that met weekly to try and figure out um, everything from sanitation protocols to capacity limits to timed entry and things like that. Uh, so we all uh, used our best research skills, our best collaboration, and we came up with phase three opening plan. And now, when you come here, what you can expect to see our timed entries into Kidscape and to the museum. You'll see, uh, before you even enter the building, you'll have an opportunity to register to, it, to go so you can have a cashless pay option and you can also make sure you can get in because we do have capacity limits for the morning and afternoon sessions. You'll see on the door signs um, amplifying the governor's executive order regarding masks. Um, you will see plexiglass between you and the person at the front desk in the gift store. You'll see lots of hand sanitizer stations and beautifully designed stickers all throughout the museum, reminding you that six feet of distance is very important and asking people to keep that physical distance. Never did you think you would have to spend so much time cleaning, even though these are historic artifacts, right? It's, it's very true. Actually, cleaners are, um, that's a whole nother level. You'll see, one thing you will see here, Ruth, is you will see our beautiful 57 Chevy with stanchions around it. Um, we actually called Chevy experts <laughs> to find out if we could put the cleaners that um, kill COVID on the car every day, multiple times a day, what that impact would be on that uh, item. And the, the answer was we can't. We would wow. destroy history in that sense. So we put stanchions around it with a lovely little sign that said, you know, we can't clean this. Please don't touch it. And we did the same thing in the all electric house, the pink formiga countertops and that gorgeous kitchen in the all electric house uh, that tells such a great story of, of domestic life in the 1950s and moving the kitchen to the front of the house and what that meant. That one we also have closed. You can you can look in, but you can't walk through it as you normally can because the cleaners would be so harsh on that. But ultimately what I find myself feeling very grateful for in addition to being here at the Johnson County Museum and with a great team that you can trust to help learn and execute these plans is I'm very grateful for 10 years of working as a cocktail waitress because I can clean that museum pretty <laughs> Really, after all those years. All right, so if you find coins around, someone's left you a tip, you can add that to the foundation. <laughs> we actually have a donation box right there on the way out, so I will put it there if I find one. Thanks, Ruth. <laughs> Some people may not feel comfortable yet coming out, experiencing a museum in person. Do you have other options for those folks? Oh yeah, we definitely understand that feeling and we also understand wanting to access the resources here even if you can't physically come here. And so we have worked really hard to create virtual ex um, experiences for you. There's a museum tour that you can go on and you can access that through our webpage at jcprd.com slash museum. We've taken some of our exhibits and made digital versions of them so you can learn about the integration of South Park School, for example, with our Hidden Histories exhibit that's now online. And we've really uh, worked to make our social media uh, much more, we've, we've been sharing a lot more history that way, as well as engagement opportunities. So um, I'll give you two examples, one very history focused and one not as much. One is the, if you've been here, you know that there are dog sculptures throughout the AHC and people love them. Uh, they're iconic here to this building and the kids love to stack them and play with them. And um, guess what? sanitizing them over and over would cause great damage to them um, at the level that we would need to for COVID. So they're actually um, in an undisclosed location right now, not open to the public, but occasionally we will take our dogs out and um, stage them around the museum in Kidscape and around the Arts and Heritage Center and let people continue to engage with the dogs because as our education team rightly pointed out when we closed and, and moved the dogs uh, that the children would worry and want to know how they are. So we give a little love letter to the kids every week and tell them what the dogs are up to. And then um, we also launched uh, in June, we started launching our Johnson County Changemaker series and um, it's, it, You'll see them every Friday where we're highlighting people in Johnson County who have made a really positive change um, toward equality and diversity in Johnson County highlighted on social media. And whereas the dog posts are about two sentences, sometimes three, these are 
four or five periods. It's actual history, you know, fully written out history. And we're really, um, our hearts are full to know that people are actually reading all the way through and liking and commenting on it. Um, even to the extent of, uh, we, we got to meet descendants of one of the people that we featured a few weeks ago, um, Robert McCallop, whose family had been here since the 19th century following the Civil War. And he started a bus company uh, to take kids from Johnson County to Wyandotte County when uh, black kids were not able to go to high school here in Johnson County. And uh, his bus company is pretty well known, the McCallop Bus Company, and his uh, great granddaughter, Jessica, uh, ended up contacting me and coming out. We spent a couple of hours in the museum talking and learning about the fuller history of her family, including her history, where she continues to give back to the community through a nonprofit called Giving Hope and Help. And then she also had a cousin who came out and took a picture with his grandfather's exhibit. And it's just been a really nice way to connect with the underrepresented histories that we um, want to flesh out a little bit more here at the museum through social media and also uh, through our exhibits. How can the community help you? Wow. Well, that's a great question, and thank you for that. Uh, I think there are lots of ways that we can have help through the community from the community. Uh, engaging with us is great. We sent uh, an email out to our members. We extended memberships uh, three months because of the time that we were closed, and and that's hard for us, you know, financially as you're a budget cut. But we knew it was the right thing to do for our people, and we told them in the email that every day that we were here, we were thinking of them. That's why we created this exhibit. We're we are public historians for a reason. We want to do good for the public we want to engage with the public and so I get a little teary-eyed even talking about it so just even the feedback knowing a letter that you write a donation that you send in a um, uh, a, com a like or a love on Facebook a share all those things mean a lot to us when we don't get to spend time with as much of the public as we used to. We also want everybody to be really aware that, you know, history matters and so you might not you might not think that um, that your mask that you made, right, might not be part of history, but it could be. And so we like for people to engage with us. Come here, come on a tour, call our curator, um, go through jcprd.com slash museum and fill out a collecting form. If you think, just ask us if you think, if there's something that we should be telling in your history uh, or in the history of Johnson County, or if there's something that should be a good artifact. In fact, when we were closed, we had someone, there was a barbershop, an old barbershop that everybody in Overland Park had gone to and it was closing. And he tracked us down, even though the building was closed to share how important he thought that history was and gave us an avenue to talk to the owner of that barbershop, which was just absolutely fascinating. And we can't make that history without knowing what the public sees as historic here. So we, I think a great thing they can do in addition to supporting us um, by visitorship, financially, by support, by word of mouth, all of those things is to also just to realize that they're making history right now, um, that we want to hear about the history that they're making right now, and that in truly understanding our history that we all are engaging in making a better future together. And this is a site where we can, we can work on those topics. Mary, thank you so much for taking time because I know you are incredibly busy, even if you're not full blown open like everybody wishes we would be, right? Right. But we really appreciate it. It's the Johnson County Museum. You can visit online, you can visit in person, just know you're going to have to do things a little bit different. We want to thank you for listening to Casey Cares, Kansas City's nonprofit voice. We're produced by Charitable Communications and we're proudly sponsored by the Ewing Marion Kaufman Foundation. If you'd like to be a guest or underwriting opportunities, if you like what we do, please visit us at caseycaresonline.org. And you can spread the love and find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Casey Cares Online.